Hi, and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, we are going to be learning about rising above addiction. What exactly does that mean? You will find out in a few moments. But first, as always, I want to take care of a few thank yous. I would like to thank you for tuning in this evening. If you have a question for our wonderful guest, whom you will meet momentarily, you can always give us a call at 781 781- Two seven zero nine one nine nine. Didn't want to give you the wrong number. I never call. Or if you have a suggestion for a future topic or think of something after the fact, you can always email me at talk at bcattv.org. I love to get email. I would like to thank the crew for this evening, Chris Flaherty, staff member, making sure that we all stay behaving ourselves and don't cause too much trouble. <laughs> Colleen Moore, Jolie, uh, Jolie Atwood, and Liz Gillespie have also given up their Wednesday evening again to come and help us out here. So I sincerely thank them for coming again and dedicating themselves to BCAT. And last but definitely not least, I would like to thank my husband, Paul, for staying home for Daddy Date Night, as well as bringing my daughter to and from her dance class this evening. (laughs) So, all that aside, I would like to introduce my wonderful guest for this evening, whom you may recognize because she has been on the show earlier, Christine Cuccinello, who is the founder of a relatively recent organization called Rising Above Addiction. Yes. So we will talk about that. But first, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, how you came to the Burlington area, if you're not originally from here, and what led you to starting a nonprofit organization, okay. which is no easy task. Mm-hmm. So I grew up in Lexington, Mass. Okay. I graduated Lexington High School in 1998. Um, so I <laughs> you're grew- such a baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, I grew up there for uh, 24 years. Wow. Yep. And my parents got, ended up getting divorced. So um, that's why I live in Burlington now. Oh, okay. So I live with my mom in Burlington with my children. Um, I don't think I could live with my mom. <laughs> I know. I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> We're working I got to stay that. there right now. <laughs> but um, so I li- I've lived in Burlington for 16 years. Excellent. Um, it's a great place to live. It is. It is. Um, and why I started ri- rising yeah, above. Yeah. Why addiction? did you start a nonprofit? Okay. Well, and I. Why this nonprofit? Okay. So I used to be the president of Burlington Overcoming Addiction. Okay. Um, is that still around? It is. Oh, okay. But Pari, Pari is now part of that. Oh, okay. What's Pari? P A A R I. Yes, it's like police. I'm not sure what it stands oh, okay. for, but they're recovery coaches. Oh, okay. Um, they get hired through PARI. Okay. And then they send them to the police stations. Oh, okay. Yes. So that's, and the police stations have to get grants for them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, they didn't really need <coughs> me anymore. Okay. So I said, you know what? I'm going to start my own nonprofit because when I got clean nine years ago, I always wanted to open up a sober house or a halfway house. Wow. So. That's ambitious. Yeah. And then I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'm going to start a nonprofit organization. Excellent. And I was thinking about a name, thinking, thinking, thinking. Yeah, I think you were here, when you were here last, last year, you were like, I want to start my own nonprofit, but what do I call it? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know why I came up with rising above addiction. Um, basically, it's like. You're rising above your addiction. Mm-hmm. Um, just well, rise you were above. We were also talking about you wanted to make it generic enough. You didn't want to have like opioid in the title because mm-hmm. you wanted to help anyone who had any kind of addiction. Yes. Whatever it happened to be. Mm-hmm. And you're overcoming or you're rising above it. So yes. that's pretty cool. Yes. Yes. So you are an official 501c3. Yes, I am. I wouldn't even know how to do that. It, 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 you know, it takes a lot. Now, do you um, focus on people trying to overcome opioid addiction, or is it, or al- has it turned out to be? It's alcohol, it's opioid addiction, oh, okay. it's cocaine addiction wow. um, I've gotten. Um, 
Any kind of substance? Heroin, um, cocaine, benzos. Wow. Um, crack. Well, you, you do have an event coming up. I do. Two events. Two events. Can you tell me about those? Absolutely. I mean, we have little posters here. Which one do you want to talk about first? Okay, let's talk about the Narcan training. Which is this one? Oh, the, oh shoot. I don't have a... Um, oh, okay. Well, let's just talk Narcan. about it. All right. So, um... It's I, a Narcan training. Uh, yes. So, I collaborated with Someone's Child Helping Hands. Okay. So, we're doing it together. Well, that's cool. Yes. So, um, it's going to be October 27th. Okay. Um, at the Recreation Department. Oh, okay. Um, so, has the Rec Center also been helping you promote it? Because I... No. Can they? Maybe. Okay. I don't know, but... Okay. We'll, we'll talk to them about that later. Okay. So, it's at the Recreation yep. Department. It's okay. at the Recreation Department. Um, 12 to 2.30 on Saturday, October 27th. 27th. Okay. Um, is this on your Facebook page? It is. Okay. Yep. It's even through Eventbrite. Oh, if you go okay. to Eventbrite. Okay. Not familiar with that one. But oh, you're not? No. Nope. Oh, okay. okay. I'll learn something new every day. Yes. Okay. So, so it's Narcan training. Now, what qualifications does someone have to have to attend this training? Do they just... Anyone can do it. Anyone. anyone. Okay. So they don't have and to have like just, prerequisites. No, and it's not just Burlington residents. It's, oh, wow. it's anyone. Uh, okay. from do they have to like town. sign up or do they just show up? Well, I asked that I asked for an RSVP. Okay. I've only gotten one RSVP. Ah. Okay. So I'm kind of scared. Yeah. Because no one has called me. Hmm. Um. Well, there's still time. A lot of people wait until the last minute about stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But it's going to be great because it's going to be um, the trainer is going to be Jake. He's an EMT. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um. And. It's going to be uh, like a projector, you know, the projection oh, screens. It's yep, going to okay. be one of those presentations. Oh, yes. okay. Cool. So, and then there's going to be a pharmacy on wheels. Ooh, what's that? So, I've never heard of it before. Yeah, now they're fine. And tell I, me was, more, tell me more. I was searching and searching because okay. I wanted to have Narcan available for everyone that attended. Okay. Um, after the training, they would get a kit of Narcan. Okay. So I got in touch with someone, and um, these are nurses that come out, okay. um, pharmacy on wheels, Okay. Um, and they come out to organizations that are doing these type of oh, trainings. Oh, cool. And it's free. Um, Even better. Yeah. And then all the you people You can save have a life, and you don't have to pay for it. Absolutely. And all you got to do is... Um, you know, give them your insurance information. Okay. It goes through through the insurance. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Like and then, somebody's got to pay for it somewhere. Yes. So that's then, why we have insurance. Yes. And then they get a Narcan kit wow. through the insurance company. Okay. Yes. Now, when you get a kit, do you have to have like a license saying no. that you're trained mm, on how to use no. it? Or oh, anyone okay. can have a Narcan kit. Oh, okay. Anyone. All yeah. right. So that is October 27th. Saturday, tw October 27th. 27th. From 12 to 2.30. That's the Narcan training. Okay. Now. The Vigil. The Vigil. Is that this one? That's the black one. The Vigil. Okay. I don't know if they can focus on this. But tell me about it. Okay. So it's a special candlelight vigil. Okay. M special means that it's different than all the other ones. Okay. Um. Uh, I wanted to make it different. Okay. So, what we're doing, um, I'm doing a slideshow. Ooh. Um, 300 pictures. Wow. Um, yeah. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's worth every, every minute. Every slide. Every, yeah. Every second, every slide. Now, are the slides pictures, pictures of those? It, there's pictures of loved ones. Lost that to have, addiction. Yes. And then okay. their names. Um, their birth date and the day they received their angel wings, and I'm also putting up a special, like um, a picture on on the side of their picture, like um, say for instance, um, I'm putting doves that oh, are that are like okay. shaped in a heart, Ooh, purple heart. Okay, it's very pretty. Um, a neat logo. 
Although this, the, the Someone's Child Helping Hands logo is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So also... Okay, when is this going to be? Um, this is also... So this is also October 27th. Okay. And it's going to be from 4.30 to 7.30, 7.30 on the Burlington Town Commons at the gazebo. Perfect. Um, if anyone would like a um, their loved one's picture on a slideshow, mm -hmm. um, please let me know. Um, so I can um, add it to the slideshow. I'm sorry, add it to the slideshow. Okay, so they just send you like a, a photo. Yep, they send me the with photo their with their name, date of birth, birthday. okay, and um, their angel wings. Angel wings, yes. Um, that is cool the way you say that. Yes, I like that. Yes. Um, also, if you would like a purple heart with your loved one's name on it, um, picture on it. I'm sorry. Um, so it's just the picture on the picture the heart. with their name. Oh, the name will be on it. Yep. Oh, so okay. the name, their date of birth, the day they receive their angel wings. Um, they're going to be laminated. Ooh. They're going to be on. Um, we're going to put them on these like purple sticks. Okay. And we're going to put them um, into the ground, and okay. then we're going to have spotlights all oh, on them. Oh wow! The, so like a little guard. Uh, yes, like heart a garden, garden. of fl hearts. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and that's going to be on the common? Yep. Right, oh. or like where the Because October is, is a, uh, like a awareness it's, it's month? A, yes. Uh, actually, it's it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Okay. Yeah. It's a whole bunch of different awareness I know, months. I know. Um, I also cover domestic violence as oh, well. Oh, okay. Yes. So uh, there is like a correlation between... Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. So, um, so this is cool. And Hearts will be placed in the grass and illuminated. Yes. There's going to be okay. resource tables there. It's child friendly. Okay. There's going to be face painters for wow. the children. If you need, if you have to bring your children, um, there's going to be crayons and um, wow. coloring books. You know, stuff for the kids to do. Cool. Um, it's just so you have to come and check it out. You'll have to you come have and check, to come it, and check out it out because it's going to be awesome. Now, what's this pamphlet? Okay, so this I... This is a support group. Yes, I started a support group um, because I know there's not many out there. Okay. Um, it's for individuals that have... Um, that are struggling or have struggled with substance use disorder okay. or if they've been a victim of domestic violence and resulted in losing their children. Oh. to DCF custody or foster care. Okay. Um, so that's every other Tuesday. Okay. So the next one um, will be next Tuesday. Okay, which is the 16th? Yes. Okay. Um, and it's at the United, Use, United Church, Church of, of Christ, Christ Congregational, Congregational 6 Lexington Street. Which is Street. the White House, or right the White Church Simons right Park. across from Simons Park. Yep. Um, and it's 7 to 8. Um, also, it's for um, grandparents that have oh. custody of their their grandchildren. Oh, okay. Because of either their their child has passed away, or their child just can't take care of their. Oh, okay. Now, do you child. know if like DCF tries to keep them with like the grandparents if they're available, as foster? You know, not really as foster, but yeah, as foster parents. Yeah, um, they do if the person is not ready to get their children back okay you know I go to court with people um, oh okay yeah I go to court with people probate court I go to criminal court I go to civil court um, for support I try and help them get their children back I, I give them all the advice I can mm -hmm. um, there's not enough help out there for these parents that have lost their children um, to DCF custody. Um, there's not a lot of help out there. Um, I, don't, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry. But no, there's okay. not a lot of help out there for these parents that are trying to get their children it's back. back. Okay. Because um, a lot of times you have to hire a lawyer, which costs a lot of money, and you don't always have that. Yep. And those that are provided by the court are so overworked mm -hmm. that you really can't get it. Mm -hmm. So, 
stream of consciousness here, would um, rising above addiction, are you a one person show or would you be willing to take volunteers to train and also go to court with you if there's Absolutely. someone? Absolutely. Okay. I'm always looking for volunteers. I'm also looking for board members. If anyone mm. would like to be a part of a board, please let me know because I'm alone doing this all by myself and it's really hard. I can imagine. Um, you know, one, it's hard running a nonprofit organization, but then the topic dealing with these families that are struggling, it's got to be mentally draining. Sometimes you just need to decompress and talk to somebody else who, who gets it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And also, um, one thing I want to do, I actually just spoke with someone tonight, and they're going to help me with a grant. Ooh, excellent. Um, because I want to open up a halfway house, sober house. Okay. I don't know which one yet. For um, what's the difference for those of us who so don't sober know. house is um, more lenient than a halfway house. Okay. Sober house, you can come and go. You okay. pay for it weekly. Okay. They they drug test you a couple times a week. You get a you have a job. It's just like living in your own house, but you okay. live with other people. Kind of like a dorm setting. Yeah. Almost. Okay. Basically, it's a house. Okay. Yeah, with you know different rooms and. So you get a room and there's like a common kitchen. Yeah, and, and you, you have share to all share everything. Yeah. So you just got a bunch of roommates. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's get what it. a sober house is. Okay. Halfway house is basically more strict. Uh, you can't go out anytime you want. Um, you know, th there's there's vid visiting times. Okay, now um, is this for people who are still in the recovery process? Mm -hmm. Okay, so by like a court order, they need to be in this halfway house? I mean, how, how is someone assigned? Um, either or? either um, they're court ordered okay. or they're just willing to go. Okay. Yeah. So I want to get clean. I need help. Yes. I'm going to go to one of these. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. So um, I want to open up one of those um, for families that are doing so well that have lost their children to DCF because okay. of substance use disorder or if they've been a victim of domestic violence okay. and lost their children because of it. And they're doing so well, right? Um, yep doing everything that they can, but the only thing that's stopping them from getting their child back is that they don't have a place to live. Okay. I want to um, open up something where they can go with their children. Okay. So Now, in so order to get their child back, do they have to be in a setting where the child and the parent each get their own room? No, they would share a room. So they could share a room. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wasn't sure, like, legality if, yeah. if that was they an They would option. share a room. Okay. Um, it would be a family family home for, okay. fam you know, um, okay. mothers or fathers mm -hmm. and uh, with their children. Um, that's what I really want to do, Linda. That sounds amazing. Um, because, you know, I've been through it. Um, I've been through it. So you have your mom to support you yeah. now. So that's... Yeah. Well, actually, sh yeah. Well, anyway, we'll go into that. Um, okay. So can we, can we talk a little bit about who are these people that are coming to you for help? I mean, the... Opioid use has become more prevalent in the news. And the fact that there is a problem, people, every, not, not really everybody, but a lot more people are aware that there is a problem that exists. Mm -hmm. Now, seeing that the awareness has been brought to the forefront, have you seen a decline in substance use and abuse decline yeah um, are like fewer people using it are fewer people becoming addicted because there's more awareness or do you think that it's still a growing problem oh no it's a growing problem it's still growing mm -hmm. okay yep i want to have a fed up walk run really mm -hmm. tell me about that okay i want to have a fed up walk run for I know everybody's fed up with it, with, with this with this you know epidemic. Yeah. 
Um, That's the word I was looking for. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes, epidemic. Um, you know, I know everybody's fed up, and I want just to have this huge fed up walk run um, fundraiser type deal. Okay. Um, Things stick a fork in me. We're done. Yeah, and I'm not too sure about the details about it, okay. but all I know is is that I, that I want to have that mm -hmm. fed up walk run um, because I'm I'm fed up. I really am. My heart breaks for all these beautiful individuals that are passing away. Mm -hmm. I see these pictures that I'm putting on my slideshow, and it's just. You know, it's got to be it's, hard. It, it's, it's so hard to see these beautiful people passing away. And you know what I've noticed? They're all born in the 80s. Really? Yes. Which would make them so, old now. Like, uh, in the 30s? Yeah, or even younger. Wow. Some people have been born in 1990, 1991. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean... And with these pictures, is there like... Are there more men than women, or is it? Um, I like think it would be equal. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's equal right now. Okay. Um, but it's just it's just horrible to see, you know, all these people. Um, so I'm trying to do everything I can to stop this. Um, Have you seen any changes? in the epidemic since you started this nonprofit? No, it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse, mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Now are you noticing like in some of your support groups, have you already been doing these support groups? So um, <clears throat> I've, I've done one. Because I think, is it St. Mark's where the pumpkin patch is? Have they been doing like every Tuesday or? Oh, um, BOA, Burlington yeah. Community. Is that I think they're still doing that meeting. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure how it's going. Okay. But I'm just wondering if like the same group of people or are there more people coming to those meetings or is it the same people or is it just trying to get people in the door mm. because nobody, you know, when it was first brought to the forefront of the news, nobody wanted to acknowledge that there was a problem. Yeah. Oh, it can't be here. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if, if you've noticed that there are more people coming to the meetings or in your experience you were you were telling me before the show that a lot of people are coming to you mm -hmm. where how do they find out about you and and what types of people are coming to you are they people that need help or people who want to offer help or both or people that want to offer help okay. um, people that need help okay. um, people that um, just you know, tell me if there's anything I can do to help. Okay. Please let me know. Um, you know, because I do need volunteers for okay. that day. Okay. We 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 do need help for the Narcan training as well as, as well the vigil. As the vigil, yeah, because there's a lot to set up. Yeah, tons. Um, no other people donating their services like. Not um, really. <laughs> so they're supposed to be. Donating five dollars towards the hearts. Okay. Well, I'm thinking like you had some events planned. Like, did you say face painting? Is there somebody yes. there who is a face painter who's willing to do it for you? Yeah. Or okay, mm -hmm. for free. I got a photographer. Oh, excellent. Which is Carrie Ann Cacavaro. <laughs> um, and where do you know Carrie Ann from? So she is married to my my um, good friend Tommy that I grew up with, Tommy oh. Cacavaro. Okay. And I met her through him because you know they're married um, and she w she started doing pictures for all the recovery events okay so she's like oh I'm new to this you know so I thought I'd ask her yeah. if she would do do it for me so she could get more um, what's it called exposure yeah more experience more experience more yeah. exposure and yeah make those connections so yeah. if somebody sees her there then Hey, you did a great job on yeah. this. Would you be willing to do this event for yeah. me? Or yeah, cool. Yeah, so I got that. This is a great networking opportunity. Yeah. Woohoo! So I got a yep, got the photographer. Um, I got um, sent uh, the selectman Jim Tiggs to speak. Okay. Yep. Um, so there's going to be some speakers. Okay. Um, Excellent. Yeah, 
I don't want to give the whole thing away. Yeah, you got to show up to find out. Yes, you got to show up to find out. <laughs> okay, now when you were talking about, you know, the halfway house and the, what was the other one? The uh, sober house. The sober house, okay. Now, a lot of times on like Facebook, different organizations that I've liked talk about beds being available. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about what kind of bed is it? Is it's a it, detox bed. It is. Mm -hmm. Now, is it at a hospital? Is it one of these halfway detox houses? Detox center. Or, okay. And how would someone go about getting a place in that detox So center? I can refer people. Okay. So I would call. Do you have to have a referral uh, to get in? Not really, but okay. I, I call. Okay. I call the place. I tell them I'm, you know, um, a recovery coach and... Um, I'm calling for this person. Do you have any okay. beds available? Okay. And I get them in. Excellent. Now, is it just like a one night thing or is it a... It, um, depending on what their drug of choice is. Okay. So alcohol is, I think, three to four days. Okay. Opioids is five to seven, I believe. Okay. So this is like the beginning of a recovery program. That's the beginning, yes. That's okay. the first step okay. to recovery Okay. is detox. Then there's CSS, which okay, is a holding. That it's a whole it's a it's a holding okay. until you get into another place. Okay. Like halfway house. All right. Um wherever they want to go. Now is it also like a bed available at a you know the CSS? Yeah. Yeah, there's beds there. Okay. So like say Danvers, for instance. Okay. Um, they have a detox, they have a CSS in the same building. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, so is there more stay. supervision like at a detox bed? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, now can someone walk out at any time like after the oh, detox yeah. say, okay, I'm mm -hmm. good. I yep. can, I can handle this. Mm -hmm. uh, I okay. suggest anyone that, that, um, goes to detox and comes out, doesn't go to, they need to follow up with aftercare. It's the most important thing or else you might not stay clean. Yeah, okay. Um, aftercare is the most important thing. Um, getting a recovery coach um, to help you and support you. Okay. Now, getting a recovery coach, is that by their choice or sometimes it a, is it a court order that they have to? That's what I want to happen. Okay. So, basically, the courts don't have recovery coaches. Okay. So, um, what I did, I went to Woburn Court. Okay. And I talked to the uh, chief probation officer. Okay. And um, I gave him all my information. I gave him my business cards. Okay. I gave him the group, the okay. support group, mm -hmm. flyers. Um, and he gave all my business cards to the probation officers. Okay. So they can refer uh, their probationers okay. to me. Okay. Um, also, I'm doing it in Lowell as well, Lowell District. Okay. Um, and are the courts like open to you coming in or is there like some hesitation or? What do you mean? Like, could you say that again? Are they, are they happy to have you there? Oh, absolutely. Or are they like? Oh. Yeah, I was actually just at Lowell Court last week and, um, I was talking to them about this. Okay. I'm like, you know what? I I do it. For, I'd volunteer. I do it. I, I would do it for free. He's like, we we need you. Yeah, <laughs> we need you. We you need know, more like we you. need you. Can you clone? <laughs> Can you clone yourself? You know, we need six Christines coming yeah. over here. And <laughs> so, um, yeah. I mean, I just um, yeah. So um, I'm a resource through Lowell District and okay. Woburn District. Cool. So I'm like looking at my notes and I'm like, we've talked a lot about this. So the treatment, is it usually replacing a drug of choice with some other kind? You know, like Narcan is to prevent overdoses, correct? Um, Narcan is to n not, it's not to prevent overdoses, or it's to, to reverse the... Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. Yeah. So if somebody is currently 
experiencing an overdose. An overdose. Yeah, Narcan you give them Narcan like and, and they reverse the, they okay. reverse it, but not all the time it works. Okay. And that's well, like if somebody's thing. in a detox center, is it like quitting cold turkey or no? Oh, in a detox? No, yeah. absolutely not. They give them medication. Okay. Um, either they wean them down, um, they give them Suboxone. Okay. And they wean them down off the Suboxone okay. each day. Um, they use methadone, wean okay. them down off the methadone. Just just um, little milligrams, not high milligrams. Okay. Yeah, trying to reduce it. Not yeah, just. yeah. Um, so, yeah, they would never let them go cold turkey. Okay. Um, I don't even know if that's a phrase that's still used, but... Mm. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they do give them meds, come from meds and stuff. Okay. Now I had a guest on the show a little while ago. Her name was Kate Genovese mm -hmm. and she lost her son due to opioid addiction. Mm -hmm. and is that like the f correct phrase? Yes. Okay. Um, and she wrote a book about her experiences and she was saying in her book and on the show that when her son was going to certain um, therapy meetings or group meetings or there were other drug users there trying to trap them yep. and still give them the medications yep. and mm -hmm. Are you the talking about like NA meetings and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. See, these NA meetings, all you do is meet other people that okay. are still using. Okay. I mean, not all NA group uh, meetings, but, you know, a lot of them have people that still offer other people drugs. Right. So, I don't know. I don't know if I would suggest an NA meeting okay. um, for early re recovery. Okay. And, he was, and she was also saying, I guess, her son, I think it was part of his probation, he had to go to... Um, <laughs> NA. Like a, a work study thing oh, okay. or something. And, or I think he was actually, yeah, it was like a work thing. And the guards and the security guards were like, they knew he was still using and they didn't do anything about it. Do you see any way that that cycle can be broken other than cloning yourself? <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. Is it legislation that would work? Is it a better screening process for staff members at some of these, you know, detox? Not, I don't know if it's a detox center or a work study or... So, um, I didn't understand the first part of your question. Okay. Could you say it? She was saying that he had to go, I think it was like he was going to see his probation officer. Okay. He had to go to like... She had to drive him to the prison, I guess, to the jail okay. or something. And all of the security guards there knew he was high, and they didn't do anything about it. Okay. And, you know, they didn't, you know, they, they just, they were supposed to be there to help him. Okay. And they just... Let it go. Let it go. What were they supposed to do? I don't know. I think that's kind of what I'm wondering. Yeah. Could they report, you know, him saying that, hey, look, he's supposed to be clean coming here and he's using? Or, mm. I don't know. I suppose I should get my, you know, facts a little straighter when I, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's okay. I, I just think that those officers. But how many How many traps are there that are out there that are kicking these, you know, kicking the people who want to recover, you know, they're already down. They've hit rock bottom. You know, some of them have hit rock bottom and they're being stepped on, yep. not being allowed mm -hmm. to. Yep. They're being kept. Do you know in that how trap. many people have called me and said, I can't get into any place. It is so hard. Like there's no, there's no beds. There's no this, there's no that. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. You know, like, nobody can get in anywhere. Yeah. You know, that's the, some Is of the... Is it because it's full? Because it's full. Wow. Or because of insurance issues or okay. other issues. And it just stinks because I think that anyone should be able to 
go to a detox. Okay. Um, whatever the whatever the case may be um, that's going on with them, okay. they should still be able to get into detox and get treatment. Right. They okay. they shouldn't be turned away. Um, and that's another issue. Okay. Um, is it more detox centers would solve the problem or should there be more education or in your experience or in your goals for what you want to do, do you see, is there a way to stop the problem before it becomes a problem? So Th there probably is a way people, but I got to find out that way. Okay. I, I, I need to find out that way. Um, you know, the detox centers won't be full if fewer people are getting trapped in an addiction. Mm -hmm. So how do you break that addiction? Mm -hmm. You know, do you have tougher laws for getting prescriptions filled? Do we have education for doctors for um, prescribing certain addictive medications for people recovering from surgery. I actually got offered to speak to um, a, like a conference with all doctors. Wow. About the opioids. Um, and what would you tell them? <laughs> Stop um, writing the prescription. Yeah, no, yeah. Unlo you know, I, I don't know. I would have to think about that, but... Um, I would have to think about because, that. Because, you know, this other guest, Kate, she was saying that her son was involved in a lot of sports. And because there he were got injured. sports, he got injured. Mm -hmm. And he had like a knee replacement. And then he had, you know, and that's how shoulder. He got started. And that's how he got started. That's, and the yeah. doctor just kept writing scripts for him. And she told the doctor, you need to stop. And he's like, oh, they're fine. There's not really? a problem with them. And yeah. And then her son just kept yeah going with them mm -hmm. and he's like my I got this covered I got this covered yeah you know also um, there's no recovery coaches in the hospitals I know that there is in Boston okay but there isn't in these other towns okay so I f I know there's a need for recovery coaches in the hospitals as okay. well I actually got a phone call um, someone looked up life coaches Okay. And I came up, and she was from Leahy Clinic. She was a c oh. counselor at okay. Leahy Clinic. And she called me, and she asked if I would be someone's recovery coach um, that was wow. admitted to the hospital. Wow. So I said, absolutely. I came in, and I talked with him. I helped him. Yeah. So, um, so how would somebody become a recovery coach? So basically, you need to go to Recovery Coach Academy. Okay. Where do you find out about one? Do you so, have to apply and only a certain yes. number of people get in? Um, or? So basically, I went through ad care. Okay. Um, and it's five days. I think it's 40 hours, Monday through Friday. Um, and it's just one week. Okay. And you get a certification, but then you need to get um, certified through the state. Okay. So you need to have 500 hours of recovery coaching. Okay. Um, which I already have. Okay. Because I've been doing this through my organization. Okay. Um, recovery coaching through my organization. So I already have 500 hours, but I don't have a um, someone to sign off. Oh, A recovery coach okay. supervisor to sign off okay. on my hours. So um, I'm stuck with that. Oh. Yeah. But I, um, I did someone reached out to me about it okay. so I just have to give and her what a does a recovery coach do I mean it's got to be more so, complicated than stop using those drugs yeah you know, I, yeah I don't mean to sound no 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 you know, yeah in unsensitive insensitive but I mean how do you advise this person so basically do you help them with recovery or do you help I don't provide them the tools but like okay so basically I don't tell them what they need to do. I don't okay. say, listen, you need to do this. Okay. You need to do that. Okay. You know. Because they'll just shut down. Yeah. So I Most give them do. options. Okay. And I say, what would you like to do? Okay. 
So, and what are some of the choices? Um, would you like to go to prison, or would you like? I mean, is it like yeah, that, or yeah. is it? You know, today I got a phone call. Okay. And um, I'm like, so what is it? Do you want to still use, or do you want to die? Because you're going to die. Okay. Um, so, so you need tact. What? <laughs> you need to have a good amount of tact yeah. in order to be a recovery coach. Yeah. So we, we not talk to them. This. We talk to them. We change their negative thoughts into put their po into okay. positive thoughts. Okay. Um you know, we 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 um Oh gosh. But a lot of times if if they have a, a substance use problem, sometimes it is a result of being in a toxic environment, like in an abusive relationship. So do you have the resources as a coach to help them get out of the re abusive relationship mm -hmm. at first? Mm -hmm. And how do you go about that? Do you partner with like the police department for you know, domestic violence or do you you know, work with the hospitals or the court systems or... Well, what, you know, so I've gotten a few calls about domestic violence. Okay. And um, I, w I go to court with them. Okay. Um, so I'll go to court with them. Um, like, I ask if they need to, you know, get into a um, domestic violence shelter. Okay. Um, are you at risk right now? You know, um, yeah, we need to get you safe first. Yeah. Okay. So, um, those, some of those questions that I ask at first, and are you it, safe? Is it different if they have kids or dependents versus if they are just a single individual? Well, this person was a single individual. Okay. Um, I haven't come across someone that has kids. Actually, um, well, let's just work on the single individual. What did you Okay, well, this, this how one you, person? Yeah, how did you help this individual? So, um, this is another individual okay. that I... Um, so, she was a victim of domestic violence. She okay. almost passed away um, because of it. And um, basically, um, it took her a couple months to recover because she had to have brain surgery. Ooh, wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, I offered her, well, the guy's in jail, so she doesn't have to worry about that. Okay. Um, but I offered her my support group. Um, I know that she's safe, but also I asked her if she wants me to come over and um, just be there for support. Okay. Um, because that's what I do. I'll go over and just sit there and mm -hmm. be a support to that person if they need someone there. So they don't feel alone, too. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's got to feel isolating yeah. at times. And then another person was very scared. She was scared of, she's scared of sirens. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so um, she's going through a great deal yeah. with domestic violence. And... Um, yeah, so I offered to go to her house. Okay. You know, I just try everything. Do you ever feel in danger appro going to some pe somebody's house? Um, I mean, do you ever feel threatened? I don't, um, but I don't know. I guess it depends on the person. Okay. Um, because I have <laughs> come across guys that have just hit on me instead Ooh, of, yeah. you know, um, wanting help but hitting on me. Yeah. And I can't, I, I can't do it's that. It's like, no, you're not here for the right reasons. Exactly. Okay. So um, anyone that tries to hit on me through Messenger yeah. um, but, but needs the help, I want to help them, but they can't be hitting on yeah. me, you know? Um, you I want to help them, but it doesn't sound like they're really serious about yeah. getting the help. Yes, yes. And you have to be serious to succeed in this, to to be able to overcome your addiction. Yeah. You really have to want it. Because um, I know that I thought I wanted it, but it didn't work. Mm -hmm. I was a chronic relapser. Um, but then jail. <laughs> Jail uh, got me clean. 
Wow. Yeah, I ended up uh, doing six months, and I was just like, you know what? I'm not living this yeah. life anymore. Because you hear so many t so many times about you know people saying, oh, I want to stay in jail because because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're you know, so used to it or something. Yeah, you know, they're used. Well, they're also like stay in prison, you know, stay in jail, stay in prison, or be homeless. Yeah. Or be in this toxic environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, I'm fed, I'm clothed, you know. And mm -hmm. Yep. So, wow. Yeah. You know, I just want to let everybody know that um, I am I'm here for anyone, anyone um, that needs to talk, that needs extra support, um, I don't care who you are. Um, if you're a grandparent um, that has their chil their grand grandchildren, please call me um, if you're having a hard time. Um, I do so many different services. Um, I try and help you know as many people as I can going through different okay. different things. Um, but. So Oh, go ahead. With the support group, is it for people who are still dealing with the addiction itself, whether it's a grandparent taking care of a child who is hoping to get back to their family? Mm -hmm. Is it, or is it somebody who may have lost someone due to addiction? Um, and is there a difference in the support that you give to someone if they're currently in a recovery situation versus if they've lost someone? So um, either... Is there a different approach that you take? Um, not, not really. Not okay. really. Because um, I'm just thinking if... if someone you know is currently going through a recovery, whether it's the first one, the last one, or the only one, you still have that person with you. So there still is hope. Yeah. Whereas if you've lost someone already, you're not getting that person back. Yeah. So how would you support someone who's already lost someone? Um, what could you say to them? Or is, is this the I can't group? say I understand. Okay. Um, because I, I, I don't understand. I, I haven't lost anyone to addiction. And people don't like other people saying I understand. Yeah. You know. If they really don't get if it. If they really haven't been through it. They don't like it. So um, I, t I try and take a different approach. Okay. Um, you know. I'm just there. I'm there for someone to um, to to listen to people. Okay. You know, um, give them any type of support or um, advice that they need. Um, I've been through this. I've been through DCF system. Um, when I was using, you know, I'm going to tell. Tell BCAT this. Okay. When I was using, I got, um, there was 20 51As filed against me. You know how bad that is? No. No idea. Do you know what a 51A is? No, I don't. It's neglect or abuse on your child. Oh, okay. Through DCF. Okay. And I always got neglect because I was using. Okay. Um... It's not something that I'm proud of. Um, now, did they remove your child from, take your child away? They took both my children away, my two girls actually. Um, and it was the most heartbreaking thing I've, one of the most heartbreaking things I've been through. Um, I couldn't talk to them, I couldn't see them. Um, it's just not something that you want to go through. Um, just please, um, if anyone's struggling with addiction, 
Um, it, you could, if you could hear it in my voice, I'm very sincere about this. I've gone through so much. I've been through so much pain um, that I just want anyone struggling to come to me so I can help you. Um, and and I'm, I'll do the best I can. Um, I'm you know, I'm doing a lot of good things, um, so reach out to me. Um, I'm always here. I'm always here for anyone that needs me. Um, oh, my phone is on 24-7. If you need to call me at 2, 3, 4 in the morning, you can. Um, yeah, so um, please reach out to me um, for any of the reasons that we've talked about. I don't mean to make you upset, but oh, I can no. tell how passionate you are about this. Yeah, I'm very passionate. Okay, we only have a few minutes left, okay. so can we review some of the upcoming events Absolutely. that you have coming up? Mm -hmm. So let's start with the Narcan training. Okay which is October 27th. Yes, Saturday, October 27th. Saber I can't talk. Linda Speaks, take two. <laughs> Saturday, October 27th. Yes. At From noon to 2.30. To 2.30 at the rec center. Yep. The rec department. For anyone interested in learning, learning how, to, how use to be a Narcan, you know, to how to use, how Narcan. To use a Narcan kit. Yep. Um, and okay. it's going to be an EMT um, training. Um, the, he's also going to do harm reduction. He's Ooh, also what's that? Um, it's basically it goes along with the um, Narcan. Okay. So um, he'll be doing that. Um, there won't be certificates given out. Okay. Which I wish there was, but um, there won't be. Um, I think we can write a letter for anyone that needs it. Okay. Stating that they took the training. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're going to be setting up our tables there. Okay. Um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good good now, good is this day. The first time you've tried having an Arcan training, or this this is the first time that I've had these big events. Okay. I did have a Christmas event last year okay um, which I um, went to s I got st. Mark's okay. to let me use their oh, excellent yeah so what it was was um, I was trying to help the homeless on 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 Christmas now how big of a homeless population is there in Burlington I went to Bi I went to Boston oh you went to Boston so okay. this is what I did I um, People came to St. Mark's and okay. dropped off donations. Oh, okay. Got it. I also had my own donations, okay. which was huge, right? So a couple days later, oh, and I did, um, I like decorated the whole hall area at St. Mark's. Oh, wow. Um, like I got, I, I even bought gloves and hats. And wrap them in gift, like a gift, oh, to give to everybody, so they would have a gift. Okay. Um, I got like a hundred, a hundred. Wow. Yeah. So um, it was really pretty, but anyways, so we went to Boston a few days later. Okay. I set up my table on Mass Ave, because okay. that's where I know. Um, You'll get business. Yeah, that everyone's struggling on Mass Ave. So I went. I was there for two hours. Everything was gone. Wow. Yep. Yep. So um, I did a good deed. Yes, you did. Yes. Now, do you have any intention of trying to do this again? So I am going to do something for Christmas, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, I wanted to um, get together with other organizations okay. and try and figure something out. That would be cool. Yeah. Like, I know a lot of schools have, like, the coat drives mm. for kids. I also want to speak at schools. That would be cool. Yep. Yeah, I want to speak at schools. I want to do, like, a, um, 
a presentation oh, okay. slideshow deal um, I want to go to okay. the middle school um, and the high school because it starts off in middle school it starts off in middle school yeah okay that's kind of scary I know my daughter's yeah. in middle school sixth grade that's like 12 yep. years old 11 yep. Wow yep so um, now that there's new principals there, yes, I'm hoping they'll let me. <laughs> they seem to be. I've only heard positive things really? about them. Oh, that's great. Yes, the new principal having the the coffee hours and being totally open with communication. Oh, good. I've heard she's phenomenal, and I happen to know the vice principal. What's the names again? Um, I forget the principal's name. Oh, okay. But okay. we'll talk about it afterwards. Okay. But okay, tell me about the vigil. Okay. Okay, because we talked about the Narcan training. Yes, the vigil. But then you have the vigil, which is also on October 27th. Yes, 4.30 to 7.30. Um, so we're going to have speakers. We're going to have a slideshow. It's going to be a very special slideshow with music. Um, mm. Then we're going to be uh, speaking. Um, okay. Me and Heather... Heather is from Someone's Child Helping Hands. Okay. She's the founder. Me and Heather will now be... Now, where's Someone's Child Helping so Hands she's based out of, out of? So, she's based out of um, India, in India. Wow. Okay. But, I was thinking she was she's, like local. But she's, she's all over the country. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, she's one of those organizations. So, that's how you're going to be in another five years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also. No I'm, I'm going to travel to in, in Indiana oh, for one of her cool. their events. Cause Excellent. We, yeah. Okay. So, anyways, um, so I'm doing the slideshow. So, if anyone wants their loved one's picture um, in the slideshow, please contact me. Um, Facebook, Christine Cuccinello, um, or you could go to Rising Above Addiction Inc. Um, and um, send me a message um, and letting me know um, if you'd like okay. your loved one in a slideshow or on a purple heart. Okay. Now, are the purple hearts going to be done at that time, or are they no? Gonna, I'm they making have to be them done at, in advance. I'm making them at my house. Okay. Um, yep. So they'll all be done, and when it's over, um, I'll be giving the hearts to the oh, people okay. that and you're going to plant the yep and they're going to be illuminated in spotlights okay now they're planting them on the common mm -hmm. how long are they going to be there for three hours okay the the hearts yeah how long do the hearts stay just that i'm night? going to get them illuminated uh el what's it called um, laminated laminated <laughs> oh, okay yeah neat yeah they're going to well, be you nice. sound like you have so many plans going on i do so like the facebook page Stay abreast, know what's going on, check everything out on the 27th because yes. we are out of time. Okay. So thank you very much for coming on the show. Absolutely. Your passion and your enthusiasm is just amazing. Thank you. So thank you very much. You're and I also Linda. want to thank everyone at home for tuning in this evening. I hope you enjoyed our con or appreciated. I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but appreciated our conversation as much as I did. So thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you around town. Bye right. everybody.